So, are you ready for another Record Store Day video? I hope not, because that's not what you're going to get from me. Greetings, one and all, and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. Uh, sorry I've gone a couple weekends without doing videos. I've been wrapped up in some other stuff. Uh, namely, to, to make it bre as brief as possible, uh, I discovered that I could record uh, records or cassettes from my stereo system onto my computer so that I can turn them into CDs. A retired friend from work had asked me, uh, gave me a stack of records. Uh, it's, you know, no complaints there. But uh, with the favor that uh, I at least try to, if I could, put a couple of them onto CD for her. Uh, there are a couple of, some old, um, mainly uh, Venezuelan folk songs, that kind of stuff that is not available on CD. And, you know, if for stuff that's not available on CD or is extremely hard to find on CD, I'm willing to do that, uh, at least now that I've figured out that, yes, indeed, I can do so. I bought, like, a 20-foot uh, audio cable, hooked it from the back of my receiver, strung it around the cabinets over there and down to uh, where I can plug it into my computer, and I got a little... Um, Sound Beast is the uh, uh, brand that I got, uh, an, an audio uh, converter. Uh, you plug your stereo or audio device, turntable, whatever, into one end, and the other end is a USB that plugs into your computer. Put that together with the Audacity software, and I was off to the races. And, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, that's what I've been doing. I've been having a lot of fun doing that, you know, trimming off the edges, and I actually have means to scan the album covers. I've got a, uh, access to a scanner that's big enough. The, the glass uh, plate is big enough that it can... Uh, i got some something that's out of control here because of the breeze. Um, uh, that can scan the entire album cover. Well, I have to do it in two, in two passes, but the uh, jacket can lay flat on the scanner. That's the important part. Anyway, so yeah, I can do the, the uh, reproduce the album cover and the whole bit. So, I've needless to say, I've been having fun doing that and pardon me while I readjust this thing here. That shouldn't interfere with the light. Oh uh, yeah, I've got the windows open because it's uh, the first over 60 degree day that we've had thus far this year, and it's late April. So yes, uh, winter has been hanging on for quite a while here in Oregon, but uh, yeah, we've finally got some sunny day days in the forecast, so yay. Anyway, not that I don't mind the rain, but uh, yeah, yeah, not that I mind the rain, whatever I'm trying to say. Anyway, I, I don't want to carry on for too long without getting to the heart of the matter. Uh, yes, uh, lots of Record Store Day videos going on uh, on YouTube right now, and so I have basically been watching very little YouTube, if any. Record Store Day just doesn't interest me. You know, I, I did it a couple of times several years ago, uh, had fun, got a couple of things, you know, the, the swag bag that uh, the local store uh, skips when it was open, uh, gave to its uh, Record Store Day visitors. But uh, yeah, I never see anything on the Record Store Day releases list that I'm interested in. And uh, especially not for the rather inflated prices that they like to charge for those premiums. Uh, so yeah, put that together with the standing in line and the crowds and stuff. And it's just, you know, Record Store Day is just not for me. If it's for you, if you had fun, if you got some stuff that you were clamoring to get, you were chomping at the bit to get, yay you. I'm happy for you. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I don't do Record Store Day, but... Uh, <clears throat> One thing that I did, I haven't done in quite a while, well, a few months, was I did a thrift store crawl. I went around to the six St. Vincent de Paul thrift stores in the Eugene Springfield area. And uh, I, I did actually did that on Record Store Day. I did half of them on Record Store Day, which I actually didn't realize. I, I had forgotten when we went into town that it was Record Store Day. So that's how much Record Store Day means to me. <laughs> I forget what day it is. Anyway, but oh yeah, and uh, another thing I forgot to mention... Um, when you get to go to a record store multiple times a week, it's record store day is year round for you. So and and that's uh, I have the luxury of doing that. So yeah, that's another reason why record store days, whatever. Anyway, so yeah, I did three of the fifth St. Vinny stores on Saturday, and the other three today just got back from town about an hour ago. Uh, today is Tuesday, the twenty fourth, twenty fifth. I don't remember. Anyway, it's Tuesday. Let's just put it that way. The Tuesday after Record Store Day. Anyway, see, so yeah, found a bunch of good stuff. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to show it to you. So, yeah. <laughs> I spent a bit more than I intended to spend, but it's hard not to spend money at St. Vinny's when the CDs are 99 cents a piece and when the cassettes are 
49 cents a piece. And I actually came home with a dozen cassettes, and I'm going to show those to you first. Uh, they, they run the gamut of uh, all sorts of things here. And, uh, I've got the little uh, compact disc world uh, CD rack here that I've got the cassettes in. First off here, I've got the best of Reba McIntyre. This was a uh, compilation from 1981, no, 1983. No, 1985. This compilation, copyright 1985. Yeah, reading comprehension. Anyway, uh, yeah, I, I do have Reba's two-disc number ones hits collection, but I decided, hey, for half a buck, uh, get a collection on the cassette. And I got it partly, partly for the cover art. Don't you love the cover art? I mean, hey, love Reba. Uh, well, to an extent. Uh, anyway, and uh, I got a soundtrack, which... Uh, um, score soundtrack, not a song soundtrack, but uh, Batman by Danny Elfman. Um, I used to have the CD a long time ago and just kind of lost interest in it, and uh, so I decided, what the heck, I saw the cassette there for a half a buck. And then some uh, really cool stuff here. We got Slim Whitman, uh, Songs I Love to Sing is the name of the album, and Robert Goulet, 16 Most Requested Songs. I sometimes like listening, throwing the cassettes on of these kitschy uh, old-time old songsters, whatever you call it, and Jim Neighbors, uh, another 16 Most Requested Songs collection, and a couple of other uh, uh, cheesy-ish uh, singers, uh, Barbara Streisand, uh, Su Streisand Superman, I, or is it just called Superman? Yeah, Streisand Superman is the name of it. Um, partly because of its connection to Superman, I don't think it's, you know, I don't know if it has anything to do with the actual comic book hero, Superman, or the movie, or anything like that. Just, uh, I was kind of in a Superman frame of mind the last few weeks. I watched all the movies and collected a few of the uh, TV shows on, on DVD and stuff, and so that's kind of, that seed was in my brain, and I picked that up when I saw it, so yay, what the heck. And this one is also um, kind of, sort of, a movie tie-in, in in a way. Neil Diamond, uh, his album Heartlight. Uh, most of you probably don't know this uh, unless you were around and t tuned into pop culture back in the day. But Neil Diamond did the single Heartlight, um, and it was based. It was heavily inspired by the movie E.T. because you know E.T.'s heart glowed, and so it produced a light. And, you know, so kind of a kitschy song. It became one of Neil Diamond's biggest hits, uh, but I don't think it was ever you know officially a tie-in with the movie. But anyway. And this, this one cassette, uh, this is the only cassette that I got that was still sealed, brand new. Aretha Franklin, uh, Through the Storm. Pretty cool. Uh, hopefully the uh, drill hole there is not in a uh, vulnerable spot on the tape. But uh, yeah, 80s Aretha, why not? Eh? Any Aretha, for that matter. And then uh, this is one I already have on, uh, on LP, but what the heck. Invisible Touch by Genesis. And I got not one, not two, but three Phil Collins cassettes. And again, it's just a case of why the heck not? Uh, we've got uh, No Jacket Required, and Hello, I Must Be Going, and Face Value. So, so yeah, um, I will probably be explaining in more detail, or kind of as a recap, I've talked about my relationship with cassettes before, but I've got this idea in my head of doing a little series of uh, my relationship with each of the big three formats, uh, vinyl, CD, and cassette. Just, you know, well, just how I collect them, my, my collecting habits, my buying habits, that kind of thing, maybe. I, I'm still, the those videos are still in the embryonic stages, but, uh, and I think I might do a, my relationship with digital music also as a thing, but uh, let me know in the comments if you are uh, up to, uh, if, the, if those ideas sound good to you, if you'd like to uh, see those videos. So I'd like to uh, have some feedback. Anyway, on to the CDs that I got. <laughs> so I got 40 CDs here, so yeah. First one is uh, Sister Hazel, and I heard a song on the radio, probably on, on the music in a restaurant uh, several weeks ago, and I wondered, what the heck is that song? So I shazammed it, and it was a, I think, the most popular song by Sister Hazel. I don't know if it's on this album or not, but it's the only Sister Hazel album that I found. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm not sure what, what the name of the song is yet, but I guess we'll find out if 
it was on the CD that I bought, or if I bought it for absolutely no reason. And then uh, a tribute tribute to Stevie Ray Vaughan. I've recently gotten into Stevie Ray Vaughan's stuff, and uh, so yeah, with uh, you got your BB King, Robert Cray, Buddy Guy, Doctor John, Bonnie Raitt. I mean, a great lineup for a tribute album to Stevie Ray Vaughan. And I think the CD might have been in my sister's collection, and not being much into blues music at the time, I got rid of it and was kind of stupid for doing so. But anyway. Sometimes you're just stupid and you can't help it. And then I decided to pick up... Uh, I think I might have had this one before also, but it was not from my sister's collection. Uh, the self-titled album by Martha Wainwright, uh, Rufus' sister, and Loudon Wainwright III's daughter. Uh, it's one of the most popular songs on here is Bloody Mother Ass... It's uh, yeah, track nine. I don't think that song got very much radio play. Probably not with a, with a title like that. And then a couple of... Uh, most of the stuff I got, uh, you will see, I am from artists that I'm familiar with. This one is one that I had never heard of before, so I decided to take a chance for, on it after I wikipedia them and found out that they are a dance-pop-ish inspired group, kind of, sort of. Uh, their name is Igloo and Hartley. And the album is called And Then Boom. It's kind of a whimsically titled album, so I figured, what the heck, give it a try. And then this other one, I don't know who this guy is, but... And this one, I think I might have had once before. I may be completely uh, wrong on that, but uh, it's a guy named Justin Hines. And what kind of intrigued me about it is... And I think I remember at least hearing about this guy in the news and on the TV and stuff. Uh, apparently he has a fantastic voice. Uh, and he is um, a, uh, what do you call it, uh, handicapped, what's the, uh, physically challenged uh, person, obviously. So, But yes, I'll be interested to uh, refresh my memory on that. And then I got a couple live albums as well. Uh, Brad Paisley, Hits Alive, and this is actually a combination of uh, one disc of Studio Hits, a Greatest Hits album, and then uh, disc two is a live set, so... Very cool to pick up. I've uh, I've enjoyed Brad Paisley for quite a while now. And then Los Lonely Boys, uh, live at the Fillmore. Yes, I, I, I really enjoy that. I've got their first two albums. I haven't uh, picked up anything beyond that. But uh, yeah, enjoy their, their Tex-Mex type of uh, stuff. Then a couple of, uh, a few greatest hits, actually. We've got Joan Armatrading. I've, uh, I've heard a few of her songs, I'm not a huge fan, but I thought for 99 cents, pick up the greatest hits and see uh, if I like them. And then another one, I've, I've had at least one CD of hers before, I don't think I have them anymore, but uh, Diane Reeves is a great uh, R&B and soul and jazz singer, uh, from what I remember. So, uh, And then we're going into some country greatest hits, Faith Hill. Uh, there, there were a couple of uh, two or three individual studio albums at one of the other, at one of the earlier St. Vinny stores that I, excuse me, that I visited. Decided to just pass them up, and lo and behold, at, I think this was the last store that I was at today, her greatest hits collection, so serendipitous. And then we have, we're going back to some early country stuff, the essential Gene Autry. Uh, I figured I'd pick this one up, I've, uh, I, I kind of like, you know, Patsy Cline, Hank Williams, and a few of the other classic country artists. And then we're coming into uh, you American Idol fans are going to enjoy this next little trio of uh, CDs. I've got Jordan Sparks' debut album. And uh, Catherine McPhee with her debut, a very, uh, very damaged CD case. I am going to recase the ones that... Uh, that I want to, that are in really bad shape, and Bo Bice. So there you go. Kind of um, beefing up my American Idol library. See how I like these. Don't know if I'll hang on to them or not, but what the heck. And then at, uh, this was, I think this was the last store that I was at, or maybe it was the one before, found a bunch of CDs uh, still sealed, including a couple CDs by Natalie Cole. I used to have this one, Stardust, but I got rid of it. But, you know, pick it up again. Uh, see if I like it. And then take a look, and this is another 
CD, kind of like Stardust that does, uh, she does some classic pop, uh, pop songs and uh, jazz tunes and stuff. So, still sealed for 99 cents. It's hard to pass up CDs for 99 cents, isn't it? And then we have a couple of albums by En Vogue. This is uh, Born to Sing, which I believe was their first album, and their sophomore album, Funky Divas. Yeah, still sealed, and they still got the. Uh, they used to have these. Um, uh, what do you call them? Foil tabs covering the CDs. I don't know why, since the CD was also in cellophane wrap. A little bit uh, overprotective of the CDs, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, and this one was uh, pretty cool because I've uh, recently gotten back into her music after a hiatus. And this one I've never owned before, and it was, here again, brand new and sealed, Beautiful Trauma by Pink. I don't know if I'm going to like the album, but like I said, for 99 cents. And this one I picked up at a... Was it a Habitat for Humanity store out in Oklahoma when I was visiting Noah and Alyssa? So I wasn't sure if I wanted to replace that one since I've got memories with it. But then this is the same recording, so I will still have, you know, second-hand memories of it, I guess. But uh, yeah, that, that CD was kind of in... Uh, had a lot of uh, scratches on it and stuff. But this one, still sealed, and it's a remaster. Uh, I Left My Heart in San Francisco, San Francisco by Tony Bennett. So, yeah. Then we're getting into some old-timey singers again, kind of like uh, some of the cassettes that I got. I couldn't resist this one. George Burns, young at heart. Why Why not? I mean... So, yeah. He was, he, he was one of a kind. I, um... I was... I'm too young to remember his, you know, comedy glory days. You know, his, the height of his celebrity. He was already already kind of on the decline when I was growing up. I remember him in a movie called Oh God, in which uh, he actually played God. It was a uh, comedy. Actually, well, did they make two or three of them? Uh, it's kind of a little series of movies, uh, comedy movies, where he played God. It was very funny. Kind of like um, predecessors to um, Bruce Almighty with um, Jim Carrey. Same, same kind of idea. Oh, actually, no, because Bruce Almighty was was given the powers of God, and George Burns actually played God, anyway. So, never mind, they're totally separate concepts, but anyway. Back to uh, trying not to make this video too long. And Andy Williams, uh, yet another 16 most requested songs. So I've got, like, today I picked up, like, three songs in the 16 most requested songs series. No, two tapes, one CD, anyway. And then some more mm, kitschy kind of stuff, and... Being a Weird Al fan, I'm, I kind of have a tertiary interest in this guy, Frank Yankovic. Contrary to popular belief, no relation. Yes, Frank Yankovic is no, not related to Weird Al Yankovic. But uh, yes, a, and I, I do have one hits collection of his, but uh, this one is more expansive. So, not expensive, expansive. More tracks on it, that's what I mean. And then... Um, this guy has been kind of the the, uh, the shining star, in a way, of my last couple of Bargain Bag videos. Uh, Canadian, I realized he was Canadian, looking him up. Uh, guitarist Jesse Cook. Uh, in my last two Bargain Bags, I've gotten his first and second albums. And this is his third album, album Vertigo. So, yeah, building up a little collection of his. And then uh, another guitarist, uh, kind of jazzy, sort of new-agey, but uh, he has rock credentials. Craig Chakiso. He was with uh, Jefferson Airplane, Jefferson Starship, and Starship, for those of you who don't know. And I thought he also played with Toto or some other 80s bands, but I may be wrong. But uh, yes, and same thing, I've got his first two albums. I picked those up at Epic Seconds, and this is his third album, uh, A Thousand Pictures. So, yes, build, building on some collections that I've uh, had and uh, been hoping to build on for a while. Well, in the case of Jesse Cook, not for a while, just for a couple weeks. But anyway... And this one has a couple of... Uh, one artist that I really enjoy and another one that I'm kind of uh, getting into. A joint album be between Lee Rittenauer and Larry Carlton. Larry and Lee. And uh, this one, again, I think it might have been in my sister's collection. Uh, not necessarily this particular copy, but... Uh, and got rid of it, not realizing that I would become a fan of Lee Rittenauer. So, here we go. 
And then here's another semi-cheesy-ish kind of guy, uh, John Tesh. And this is the John Tesh Big Band, where they play a bunch of uh, uh, Great American Songbook standards here. So I figured, and it was still sealed. So I figured I, I'm kind of kind of a sucker for those uh, Great American Songbooks uh, hits. So I figured I'd go ahead and pick that up. And then another, this guy's a pianist, not a guitarist, that I've kind of enjoyed for a while. David Benoit, this is his album Fuzzy Logic, and I kind of, I, well, actually, come to, come to think of it, I, I hope I don't already have this one. I've got, I've got a couple of his, but uh, yeah, I don't think I already have this one, but yeah. And then another New Age artist, uh, this is a, a Greatest Hits collection of hers. I have one, or possibly two, of her other, of her individual albums, Suzanne Ciani or Chiani. Or maybe maybe Chani. I can't remember how you pronounce it, but uh, yes, she was actually. I didn't realize this until later on, until actually just recently. She was kind of a pioneer in um, electronic music or new age music. So kind of along with um, Wendy Carlos, uh, they came at it from different approaches, I think, and at slightly different times. But uh, yeah, the same sort of um, kind of ahead of their time in a way. And then this one, it looked kind of interesting. Uh, it's, yeah, Canadian Brass, uh, their album, The Champ uh, Champions. It's got some, uh, their brass renditions of some popular songs like uh, Elton John's Honky Cat is in here. And uh, Scarborough Fair by Paul Simon. Although I think uh, Scarborough Fair, Paul Simon's version of Scarborough Fair, I think is based off of a folk song, I think. Um, Maxwell's Silver Hammer by Lennon and McCartney. Uh, a Wider Shade of Pale by Procol Harum. Or is it Procol Harum? I'm not sure how you pronounce it. And uh, We Are the Champions, the uh, Queen classic. Uh, Living for the City by Stevie Wonder. So, yeah, I, I figured this was just... The, the track list was too interesting to pass up on this. So I figured I had to give it a listen. And this guy is another guy kind of like... Um, oh, wh whatever they were, the, that uh, dance pop band back in the beginning. Uh, Igloo and Hartley that I had never heard of before. Looked him up on Wikipedia and decided to give him a try. He is also a pianist, I think. Um, Alex Bunyan, I think is how you pr pronounce it. Oh, there you go. Uh, this Time Around is the name of the album. And uh, so, yeah. And so, yeah, the uh, one of the songs here on the hype sticker was a little bit uh, cringy to me, the title. Sweet Sticky Thing. It's kind of like, ew, I don't want to touch it. Anyway, uh... <laughs> The, f the first track is called Kluk Mop. So uh, that intrigued me. When I see weird song titles, they kind of intrigue me. So, uh... What is there, uh... Oh, and the, the album closes with Kluk Mop, the open-minded mix. So, yeah. I figured it was worth a try, especially, as I said, for 99 cents. Oh, this next one, we're getting into the soundtracks. I've got a few soundtracks here. This one, I don't know if it's, you could really call it a soundtrack, but... I have this one already, but it was kind of scratched up, and I can't remember where I got it. I can't remember if it was in my sister and brother-in-law's collection, or if I picked it up off the freebie shelf, or if I might have gotten it at Epic Seconds. But uh, yeah, it was really scratched up. Uh, it didn't skip at all, but it's like kind of I kind of have ever since had my eye open for another copy. But I was thinking, okay, I'm never going to see it again. It looked it's pretty rare when I look at it on uh, Discogs, but wouldn't you know it? There was a copy of it right there at one of the St. Vinny stores. CD was perfectly clean. Um, the official album of Disneyland and Walt Disney World. It's got songs from the main, you know, the attractions at both um, uh, both parks, as well as some songs from Epcot, which when I visited back in 83, it was called Epcot Center, and it had just opened within, within a year. And so a lot of the Epcot uh, songs, the songs in the Epcot section, uh, still have, um, I have memories attached to those. So, uh, yes, definitely when I saw this on the shelf and I opened it up and saw that it was a clean copy, I was like, that that one score was worth the entire day for me. But uh, anyway. And then a uh, couple of TV song, uh, TV soundtracks. Music from the Gilmore Girls. I had been, I had had this one a long time ago. For some stupid reason, I got rid of it. And the Gilmore Girls was one of the sh shows that had the best taste in music. Uh, although, you know, with my limited music taste back in the day, I didn't really realize how great their their taste for songs are. 
But yeah, lots of indie rock and singer-songwriter stuff and stuff that was lesser known. You know, not the stuff that you hear on the radio all the time. So uh, I was very happy to see this on the racks again. So yes, very, very happy to get that one. And uh, here's one that uh, I'm going to do a... Uh, actually, these next two, rearranging them here on the tray. These next two, and I'm probably going to do a list video of, of this at some point, is soundtracks that I own from movies or TV shows that I haven't watched. At least not yet. And this is this is another TV soundtrack, and I have never watched the show. Nashville, this is Season 1, Volume 1. Um, and again, when the show came on, I was just not into country music hardly at all. But now that I've got developed a bit of a taste for country music, I might uh, maybe seek it out and see if it's on any streaming services and uh, check it out that way. So kind of happy to pick that one up. And then another one that I uh, from a movie that I have not seen, at least not yet, um, The Legend of Zorro. This is by James Horner, and that was one of the reasons why I picked it up, was uh, you know the late James Horner, rest in, rest in peace. Uh, I've, always, I've enjoyed pretty much all of his soundtracks that I have. I have three or four. Titanic, Avatar, Krull, which was one of his, um, one of his least known and le most underappreciated scores, by the way. But I could get into that at uh, some other point. But this is also a uh, hybrid super audio CD. And I've never bought one of those before, so uh, we'll see if it plays. I don't anticipate any problems, but every once in a while, if it's a SACD hybrid or a dual disc or some other thing, there's always a little risk of it not playing on your player. So, But I figured for 99 cents, it was a low-risk proposition. And then the final one in the soundtracks is from a movie that I have seen. It's been a long time since I've seen it, but I loved it. So listening to the soundtrack is going to bring back memories. I've never owned the soundtrack to Sister Act before, so I uh, decided to go ahead and get it. And uh, yeah, I'm going to have to rewatch that movie at some point, because first of all, I love Whoopi Goldberg. But uh, there we go. And then I thought I would close out with four holiday CDs that I pick up. So if you have absolutely no interest in holiday CDs, uh, thanks for watching. See you later. But uh, these won't take long to go through. This CD was at the one... Um, St. Vinny's thrift, thrift Store before. I went back to get it, couldn't find it anywhere, and then lo and behold, when I'm not looking for it, there it is. Home for Christmas by NSYNC. I had wanted to pick it up uh, before this past Christmas because I got the Backstreet Boys holiday CD uh, for my you know for my Christmas video, so I kind of wanted to do Backstreet Boys and NSYNC side by side, but missed opportunity. But uh, yes, I finally found it eventually. And then... Uh, Oh, this next one, and uh, it, it's not the original track listing, which I was kind of disappointed in, found out after I got home, but still, it's nice to have on CD, Elvis's Christmas album. I think this is the same uh, version that I have on cassette. So, uh, yeah, and I don't know, maybe some Elvis uh, fanatics out there might know, was the album in its original song sequence ever released on a standalone CD? I'd like to know. And the answer is probably out there. I just haven't uh, looked deep enough to find out yet. And then these last two I bought are were both sealed. We've got um, Christmas with Johnny Cash, which I think is just a compilation. I don't know if it was ever ever a, its own studio album, but uh, yeah, I figured I don't know how Johnny Cash, his voice and stylings would translate to holiday CDs. It kind of like the same uh, uncertainty I have with. Uh, Bob Dylan, he put out a Christmas album several years ago, so it's like I'm kind of afraid to pick that one up, but for 99 cents. And then the last one, this one was also still uh, still sealed, Liberace, a Liberace Christmas. Because and, and Liberace, I'm sure, is an artist that will translate really well to holiday songs, because, you know, uh, instrumental piano is uh, probably bound to be pretty fun and festive and stuff. So there you have it. That was my St. Vinny's Thrift Store haul for spring of 2023. What do you think? Comments are welcome. Uh, but yeah, okay, so I guess that's it. I don't want to make this video any longer. It's already about a half an hour long. So anyway, that'll do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds. 
and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.